Go. Okay, in terms of, uh, you mentioned the word organic. What, is, what, is that, what does that mean in terms of uh, SEO? That's a very good question. Um, so a lot of people talk about organic online. It's, uh, you know, it's not the same like organic when you go in the food produce, but organic, natural, the way that Google talks about it is against the black hat technique, which is paid version, right? You naturally would like people to connect your content, link to your content. You don't want to go to someone and say, hey, I'll give you $100, can you link to my website? That's non-organic, that's like fake. That's like you went and you paid for it and they link to you. Or like sponsored, right? when you have a sponsored blog. There's a company that you pay them money and they post their blog with the backlinks to your website and it's sponsored, it's a sponsored blog post. Like Huffington Post has a lot of those and stuff like that. You, this is, this is non-organic, it's like paid technique. Mm -hmm. You have websites that you would say, hey, you know, I'll link to your website, I'll give me $50 a month or give me $200 a month. Those are all fake and this is what Google is fighting against. It's like people paying for the backlinks, for the easy way technique. People, or organically would mean like you wrote such a great content about you know case study how to maintain your uh, AC uh, equipment on on annual basis so you save money in the long run right mm -hmm. and that post is so amazing that other people that talk about that or write about that they will link to you they say oh so and so wrote such a nice article about this read more about it he has citations he has proofs he has case study before and after pictures and that's organic people going to it. Also organic is, let's say, when people when you're making a social media post and people are liking it without you paying for spawn, for posting it. You just like it's so good of a content. It's such a good infographic. People want to share. People can you know interfere. People can identify themselves. So that's all organic. There is like a black hat SEO technique, gray hat SEO technique, and white hat SEO technique. Black hat is where you go and you buy links. White hat is when you go everything organically, like everything natural. You generate good things, people link to you. Let people know, hey, I have a good content, come to me, and they grab it, they link it, they talk about it. Gray hat technique is something in between, like online giveaways. It's it's on a border with a Google policy, like you are paying, but then you're not paying again because it's something normal you do. Or let's say, like I mentioned earlier, um, uh, local chambers, right? Local chambers, you have to pay for membership. They're not free, otherwise everybody will be a member. So you do pay, but you're not actually paying directly for the link. You just pay for a membership, and then you're getting the back link. The same like Better Business Bureau, for example, would be a great head technique where you're not straight paying for the link, but you're paying for the membership. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is a good thing to be. You know, if competitors in there, you need to be in there. Uh, as far as not just paying straight for the link, uh, th that will be organic. Okay. Um, and that question I have is. Um, what if, let's say, okay, I have a business, let's say I'm like a plumber or something in, in the valley, and um, I'm just, I'm not social media savvy. I don't, I, you know, I, don't, I have a Facebook page, but I hardly ever go on it. I'm not, I just, I don't really know how to, I don't do blog posts. I don't, I don't, I, I'm just, I mean, I have a good service, a good quality service, and I have a good reputation, but I just, I don't have an internet presence. But I want to, I want to boost my, uh, obviously my internet presence, but, um, what other ways, is there any other ways beyond just doing all, what you're saying, all these, these things like uh, posting to Facebook, um, you know, uh, making YouTube videos. I mean, I don't have time to, to make YouTube videos of showing people how to do plumbing and stuff like that. Like, what can I do? Is there a way around it? Is there a way to like um, get around doing those things to where you can start building uh, traffic? And then once you start building traffic, maybe you can, you, there'll be more options to, uh, to apply, you know, my social media elements, but is there a way to, to, to boost myself without doing that at first, basically? Um, it's a good question, it's a very good question. Uh, basically, you know, to boost yourself online without like online work is really difficult to do um, without any like help, you know. If you don't want to make videos, for example, there are online tools where you can buy videos. You can buy a video, you can rebrand the video, you can put your own logo on top of it. There are videos for AC repair, videos for dentists, videos for, you know, you can, you can go different routes. Mm -hmm. But definitely, you know, what online is, online is like an online library. It's like a big cloud of so much data, pictures, tags, videos. So if you don't provide data, it's, mm -hmm. it's really difficult for you to, to grab some traffic. Yeah. Because, you know, people, how are people going to find you? If, if you have a Facebook page, for example, yeah. and you're posting to it, okay, why would I go to a Facebook page? Like, yeah. what is there for me, right? That's when we talk about bounce rate. Yeah. I would want to come back to a Facebook page if you had a nice advice, 
if you have jokes, if you had like some, you know, sayings or verbiage or something going on, but if you're just empty or you haven't done a lot of it, I, I would suggest you close down that Facebook page. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, there's people, they have a big Facebook logo on their, on their like plumbing websites, like, mm -hmm. hey, come to my Facebook page, right? Yeah. And you're like about to call them, then you go to the Facebook page and they haven't had posts since 2011. Uh, yeah. The first thing, what would you do? Like, hey, is this guy still in business? Because there is a trend, right? And where the trend goes is like, plumbers are posting, they're making awesome infographics with the snowflakes over here and the sunshine over there and then a person, you know, the old man freezing and then the, you know, the young lady coming, answering the phone and all that stuff and it's engaging, right? The, yeah. the trend is there. It's, it's the same way we had to go to school and we had to learn numbers. The same goes with the internet. We, we have to know basics. Yeah. If you don't like to use Facebook for personal issues or you don't want the people to know what you're doing, open your fake f Facebook page just to see how, how it works. Yeah. You know, you don't have to be uh, X, Y, you can be B, C on Facebook, you can post pictures of others or pi pictures of places or pictures of sky and see how users engage with that content and will help you, you know, get knowledge and practice to be able to run your AC repair uh, valid page uh, to, to engage. Uh, sometimes, you know, if, if you would like to really take shortcuts is get affordable package with, with one of the agencies that are willing to work like, you know, a couple hundred dollar package for you. Uh, share, share the news media, sign up for like a, you know, Google alerts, AC repair news or AC news or stuff like that or weather news and just share the content. You just, you know, you get, you get to the LA Times page and they're talking about how, you know, 4,000 cities in, in the next century are going to be under the water and you they have Facebook share button and you share that as your as your uh, Facebook page and, and you generate content without you even writing without you mm -hmm. taking any photos you can just grab it and you know it shows activity and it helps because it's like related to your business you're not sharing the page about I don't know Kardashians for example because not related with AC repair but yeah. you're sharing about the content about pollution about the weather about the you know ozone layer and stuff like that Okay, another question I have is, um, let's say, uh, how important is uh, like stuff like, um, you talk about online reputation, but how important is, is sites like uh, Yelp in terms of like, let's say if I have a bad review and like, I mean, if I have, let's say if I have four really good reviews and one really bad review, I mean, is that, is that something that's going to, and how much control do I have over that, like to, to change that? Like, is it something that's easy to change or is like, or is something I had no control over and is it really going to affect my business? Uh, one study app review is going to affect your business. So the number one thing you should do when you get one study app review is respond to that review. Respond to that review in very in your tell your story of the of what happened. Yeah. In a nice way. Don't accuse the reviewer. Don't don't tell them they're liars. Don't call them names. Don't be unrespected. Yeah. Give them a nice, respectful feedback. What is your side of story? Offer them, you know, to correct the issue. You just like to see how do you respond to negative things. Mm -hmm. Every restaurant with 100, 200, or 1,000 reviews, uh, guess what? Even they are like five star rated, they will have one star reviews. Yeah. It happens, somebody has a bad day, somebody doesn't like a spicy food, somebody doesn't like a raw meal, or you know, things happen. Yeah. So you're gonna get one star review. Mm -hmm. uh, reputation is very important for you. On a reputation because the consumers, how they search online is, they search, they, it's, for them it's easier to repair three AC repair guys online without even calling them mm -hmm. to see which one is better. Make their own little algorithm who I'm going to call instead of just go call the first guy, right? And once they make their own algorithm, they decide, okay, they see you for good five star review, but one bad star review, and they see a good feedback, okay, that happened, you know, uh, you were late or you were not on time or this and this happened, and the feedback was that you apologized, the accident happened, and you notify the customer, you're willing to give them a discount. And there are people like that. People are, oh, this guy is cool. I mean, yeah, he was he ran late to the appointment, but he was willing to give them a free uh, maintenance mm -hmm. or free air filter or you know free uh, coolant or you know whatever is part of your business. So it is important on our reputation to maintain it. And of course, if you have you know those four good star reviews, how old are they? Mm -hmm. Are they like a year old, a month old, a week old? Uh, you know. So when are those good star reviews happening? So if you do get a bad star review today. Number one thing you should do is slip over, mm. contact the reviewer, try to you know work out the deal. Say hey, I'm really sorry. I'll do this. Let's fix that review or something. Yeah. Work on your new co customer immediately. Like 
start getting a five star review, right? So, and then on the second customer, another five star review, so the way, you know, the new reviews are coming. And then the next day, you know, give them, write a nice feedback. Whatever you worked out, if you couldn't work, out, work it out, then, you know, tell them your story, but don't, don't accuse your customer about anything because people don't like to see that. Usually people are like, oh, they're lying, we did cheap on time, we did this, that, or, you know, this, you know, th even if they are review competitors or reviewing your business, you would write, I'm really sorry, but our records or our books don't show you've been our customer, we really apologize, we would like to resolve that immediately, please contact us at this and this number, you can talk to our CEO or you can talk to me, I'm the owner, or, you know, and that will help your business reputation as well. Okay, last question I have is, uh, let's say if I have an online store, I have a, um, so my conversion is, I'm actually wanting to convert sales. Um, and uh, what, in terms of, this, can I get from Google, let's say, in terms of like, um, I don't understand totally what, how AdWords work or like how I can, you know, I mean, can I buy like links, can I buy, how does that work with Google? How would I even approach them? Like how does that, like, uh, how would I start with that? I have, I have the content, I have the site built, but now I want to like I want to drive traffic to the site, and um, like I said before, I don't want to go through all the social media um, outlets to start off with. So, but I mean, just how would I go about with Google to get started with that and to basically generate large amounts of traffic as quickly as possible? Yeah, uh, the fastest solution when when you know we test out the new uh, sites or uh, startups is always the best way to do the CPC or PPC campaign, cost per click. Mm -hmm. which is AdWords, Bing, Yahoo. Uh, the easiest solution is AdWords. They give you $150 free credit. Mm -hmm. uh, you can start, um, t you know, you set up your keywords, yeah. your target area. I want to advertise United States or California or yeah. the worldwide. You set up your beats, you set up your ads, shop now for computers. We have laptops, mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, Pentiums, we have uh, Intel processors, all that stuff set up your campaign, you can do Google Shopping as well, um, which is like an add-on to the AdWords, mm -hmm. where you can, you know, it takes a bit longer to set it up than actual AdWords, but it can be done in, in a couple days. So when you have all this set up, then you run, set up your daily budget, you say, I want to spend $20, $20 a day, yeah. $30 a day, you can stop it or adjust it as you go. It's a lifetime, like, you know, real time, like you go, you can adjust it to $50. Yeah. You can pause it tomorrow. You can go on vacation and it doesn't run for like a week or, mm -hmm. you know, you can do it. It's, it. It could be expensive. You know, some keywords are like a dollar per click. Some keywords are like $10, 20 per click. Yeah. Uh, you only pay for the click. If somebody clicks two or three times in one single day, 24 hours, you only pay one. So it's an easy way to get a lot of traffic right away. It's costly. Mm -hmm. It's what SEO works, you know, to help you get organic traffic without paying for it mm -hmm. on, on the results. But then again, you know, there, there are always people clicking on ads. So if you don't spend CPC campaign like AdWords money, you just go in SEO organic traffic, you're not getting, you know, millenniums. For example, they make uh, research like survey, they ask millenniums, they said, uh, where are you guys clicking? They asked 100 millenniums and 80 of them, 80% didn't even know the difference between the ad result and the organic result. Mm -hmm. So they would just click on the ads. They wouldn't even know, like yeah. what are you talking about? Like ad and you know, Google and all of those are mimicking paid results to look more like organic results. Before it was orange color, now it's green. Yeah. So it kind of camouflages into the result page, right? So uh, it is the easiest way to do the AdWords campaign. Uh, good SEO would always advise you the SEO with AdWords to test out the keywords, to get in insights from the AdWords marketing campaign, which keywords are working, which keywords are converting, so then, then you know which keywords to focus on. Yeah. Easier on the SEO uh, campaign when you test them out of the AdWords. Okay, uh, um, and last, uh, how long is this usually like, something? let's say if you, you invest like a, a decent amount of money, and make, what's the kind of like, Time, time range that, that this would take effect where you can start seeing results from it. Like, how long does it, does it depend on the amount of money you spend, or is it just um, on adwords that you have, or how does that work? Like, in terms of time, time spent, and where you can start seeing like actual conversions coming in and, and uh, traffic like increasing. Yeah, that's a very good question. Uh, with with adwords, uh, you will see results immediately. Um, let's say we, we set up your adwords campaign this morning. Uh, you're an AC guy in, in, in the valley, you might be getting phone calls before you're even leaving this office. That's how fast that can work, right? Mm -hmm. Of course, you can be out of your budget really fast, 
And now the SEO itself, it, it doesn't really take any longer because you know the SEO is sometimes the tipping point is just claiming the business mm -hmm. or you know putting the right category in your, on your page or writing a description or adding the images to your uh, Yellow page like your Yellow page has a visitors, but there's no conversion because all you only have one picture You look like mm -hmm. kind of shady business. So everything takes effects immediately mm -hmm. now How long does it take for online business to to you know to get a needle from investment to being profitable business? This is a good question and you know the most and average time the only businesses take are three years uh, so, you know, usually what happens with, with online businesses, people set them up, start them up, but 90% of them never work out mm -hmm. because they don't understand, okay, I'll, I need a website and their budget is, let's say, $25,000 yeah. and they spend $22,000 on a website because the budget is twenty five and 3000 for the DBA and for trademark and all that stuff for lawyer, for corporation. Okay, now we have website, now we have everything. We have corporation, we have bank account, we have business yeah. card. Uh, okay. Uh, we don't have business, yeah, because you guys spend all the money to set up, like you know, just to open the store. Like when you open the store, you still have to have money for the next month rent, for the signage, for you know, for you need to have money for marketing. Yeah. So every one of business is investment, and sometimes people think, okay, I'm gonna give hundred dollars to Google, and I'm gonna sell, I'm gonna do one AC, I'm gonna invest, and to do another one. They don't, they don't calculate that everybody is using AdWords yeah. or most of the businesses are, are using cost per clip campaign so the, the, you know, the costs are, go, are higher mm -hmm. so you need to have enough money to get it going for at least like first six months mm -hmm. to get some serious you know, uh, investments back mm -hmm. so you can put some serious money back into your marketing campaign and you know, in three years of being on business you kind of float it out and you're like the needle turns into in the green branch and you're profitable business, you're making a lot of money and your business is good to sell, your business is good to, to, to hire more people to expand. But you need to get to the three years range on average for any type of e-commerce or online business to, 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 to break the, ma the major ice mm -hmm. and a major uh, milestone. Okay. okay.